Hey, Channel Federator. I would just like to request um, 107 facts about Death Note. I'm a huge fan of Death Note, and I'm a huge fan of yours. So if you could do that for me, that'd be amazing. Creepy death gods, notebooks that kill people, sugar addicted spy geniuses. Death Note is a shade darker than your usual anime and relies on suspense rather than action packed fighting to tell its story. That's why the best selling franchise has earned itself a huge fan base, as well as the anemone of many parents and even some governments. Think you know the whole story? Think again. I'm Kirsten, and whether you're a diehard fan or just curious what all the fuss is about, we're here to give you the inside scoop on your favorite morally dubious anime and its numerous offshoots. So sit back, relax, and take some notes not in that notebook, because we're counting down the 107 facts you should know about Death Note. Let's get started. Number 1. Death Note began its long, successful journey as a manga, written and conceived by Takumi Oba and illustrated by Takeshi Obata. Number 2. How wildly successful, you ask? It has spawned not only the manga series, but an anime series, two remix films based on the anime, three live-action movies, a live-action TV series, a a possible Hollywood treatment, and a stage musical. Number 3. The manga was first introduced to the world as it was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump from December 2003 to May 2006. Number 4. There are 108 chapters of Death Note published in 12 volumes. There's also a 13th Death Note that serves as an encyclopedia containing extra info on characters and interviews with the creators. Number 5. Oba wanted to create a suspense series. He felt he couldn't create a combat-heavy manga and that there were few other suspense manga available. Number 6. Even though he submitted a pilot chapter to the parent company of Shonen Jump, Oba didn't expect Death Note would be picked up. He thought his suspense-heavy, zero-fighting manga didn't quote fit with Jump. Luckily for us, he was wrong. Number 7. Oba wanted to take advantage of serialization, so he knew up front he wanted the series to follow one long plotline instead of being episodic. It was always intended to focus on one cast dealing with sequential events triggered by the Death Note. Number 8. Obata said he quote, didn't really get it the first time he read through the rough draft of Death Note, but was drawn to the series primarily because of the Shinigami, and he definitely went all out on those guys. Number 9. Obata drew the pilot to appeal to himself, and still wondered if the series would be picked up since it had little action and the main character didn't drive the plot along. Number 10. Oba and Obata did not meet in person while working on the pilot chapter, communicating through their editor instead. The two didn't meet in person until an editorial party in 2004. Number 11. Takeshi Obata's first big exposure was winning the prestigious Tezuka Award in 1985 for his one-shot Gokyaku Konin wo Shinwa. He also got a job at Konin Jump out of the deal. Oh, and he was 16 at the time. No big deal. Number 12. There is speculation that Sugumi Oba is a pen name and that the reclusive writer is actually Hiroshi Gamo, known for the strange superhero series Totemo Lucky Man from the 1990s. Proponents of the theory point out that Light's Cram School offers a Gamo seminar and that a character in his later manga Bakuman works on a very similar manga. It's far-fetched, but hey! We're all about weird conspiracies at Frederator. Number 13. Opa felt he worked best in visualizing the story of Death Note when he was relaxed. He pictured the panels in his mind while he was in bed, drinking tea, or just walking around his house. Number 14. When designing the color covers for the graphic novels, Obata wanted to assign colors to each of the characters, hence the whole blue-red, L-light trope in the anime. Number 15. The Death Notes were originally supposed to have a different design. Obata wanted them to be Bible-like, something you would automatically think was a Death Note. This idea was scrapped for the look of an ordinary notebook. Number 16. It was also discussed that Death Notes could change form depending on time and location. For example, a Death Note in ancient Japan could be a scroll. Obviously, this idea was never used in the series, although it'd be really weird to come across a mangled notebook in ancient Japan. Number 17. The pilot chapter featured a scrapped concept for a death eraser that could revive people killed by the Death Note, as if the person in charge of the Death Note wasn't already playing God enough. Number 18. The word Shinigami literally means death god. The first character, Shini, means death, and the second, Gami, means god. In Japanese culture, Shinigami are gods or deities that kill humans to extend their own lives. Number 19. Obata said there are no physical difference between separate men male and female Shinigami. The sole differences are design details that he added subconsciously. Number 20. 
as of April 2015, and despite all the bans, Death Note currently has 30 million copies in circulation. Number 21. Boba had trouble creating Ryu. At first, he envisioned him as a handsome man with dark hair and wings. He later changed the design when his editor pointed out that the god didn't necessarily have to be human. Oba began to think of Ryuk's face as a mask, with his real face underneath being attractive. Number 22. Obata considered basing the design of Shimigami on wizards, but decided against it. The rags on their body are remnants of the idea. Number 23. Shinigami all have their own, unique, written languages. Takeshi Obata says he assumes all Shinigami can understand each other's languages. Number 24. The Shinigami world has a hierarchy, with the Shinigami king on the top and all the subordinates below. Death gods are given numerical levels depending on their power, where Yuke ranks is up to your personal inference. Number 25. If a Shinigami breaks the rules of the Shinigami world, they face one of nine punishment levels. Severity increases from level 8 down to level 1. And if you're wondering where 9 came from, there's also an unnumbered extreme level below 1. If a level 3 or worse is applied, the Shinigami will die. Killing a human without a death note warrants an extreme level punishment. But can you imagine a Shinigami just strangling some guy instead of scrawling down his name? Neither can we. Number 26. Ryuk is 6 foot 6 inches tall. He might be a born basketball player if he wasn't so gangly. Number 27. The early version of Ryuk featured in the pilot was later described by the authors as really lazy and incompetent. Number 28. In the pilot chapter, Ryuk drops two death notes into the human world, one to a character named Taro Kagami and one to his classmate Muira. However, as the old saying goes, no light, no fun. That's a thing, right? Number 29. Ryuk wrote the instructions of the Death Note in English, thinking it was the most popular language in the human realm. Number 30. After being given the description, quote, a brilliant honor student who's a little out there, Obata had no trouble coming up with Light's design, although he had to reference fashion magazines to see what a brilliant person would wear. Number 31. As the manga went on, Obata started to streamline Light's look by taking out what he thought were, quote, unnecessary lines. However, he had to back Backtrack and make him resemble his initial look when Light loses his memory. Hey friends, Tim here with Channel Frederator, taking a small break to announce the launch of our new channel in Spanish, Atomo Network. There you'll be able to enjoy some programming in Spanish, including 107 facts about your favorite cartoons. You won't hear my voice because I can't speak a lot of Spanish. And to that I say lo siento. So go ahead and subscribe and join our House of Animation. Now back to the facts. Number 32. Light's last name, Yagami, was the suggestion of Oba's editor. Yagami is made up of the kanji characters for Knight and God. Number 33. Light's first name is written as the character for Moon. Vaito, or Light, aren't the proper readings of the name, which is why in the anime Misa reads it as Tsuki, or Moon. Number 34. Oba envisioned Light's father, Soichiro, as, quote, an honest police officer with a strong sense of justice. He wanted the reader to feel sorry for everything he has to go through, and boy, do we. Number 35. According to Oba, if Light had never found the Death Note, he would have become one of the greatest policemen in the world and worked alongside L to solve crimes. Just try not to be a little sad about that. Number 36. Tetsuro Araki, the director of the anime, said that if he was one of Light's friends, Light would have surely used and killed him. Number 37. Light's birthday is February 28th, 1986. Now we can all celebrate Kira Day. Number 38. L's birthday is Halloween, 19. 79, which actually makes him significantly older than Light. Older than I had imagined, anyway. Number 39. L's full name is L. Lowlight, but it kind of looks like Lolliot, so it's very fancy. Number 40. Both Obata and Oba say that L is their favorite character. Light is Oba's second favorite human character, which is probably code for Ryuk and the other Shinigami all rank above Light. Number 41. A lot of the character design of L was left to Obata. Oba wanted a character about the same age as Light, since making the detective much older might not hold much interest. Oba also wanted his name to be, quote, a single letter with a lot of significance. 
significance. Number 42. Although Oba admits it wasn't his intent, fans have said that El's fighting style resembles the Brazilian martial art of capoeira. Oba has said that he was just looking for an effective way for someone to kick a person while handcuffed, but if fans see a resemblance, it makes him happy. Number 43. When asked about El's ethnicity, Oba said, quote, I think of him as a quarter Japanese, a quarter English, a quarter Russian, and a quarter French or Italian. Number 44. Oba wrote El so incredibly quirky because he, quote, wanted El to be an extremely unorthodox character to contrast with Light, who is supposed to be a brilliant and outstanding student. Number 45. When asked if El had any friends, Oba said no. When he told Light that Light was his first friend, it was a lie. El could never have a friend because he found humans to be a very cunning species. Number 46, which naturally means we have to bring up the foot massage now. Death Note is actually full of a lot of biblical references. Light is portrayed as being crucified at the end of the series. And that scene where El massages Light's feet mirrors the story of Jesus watching his disciples' feet. Although the original story probably had a lot less awkward sexual tension, and Light is a pretty disturbing interpretation of Jesus. Number 47. Watari's name was originally supposed to be Shadow, but Oba's editors discouraged it, probably because it made Watari sound like an epic superhero sidekick. Number 48. Obata used Oba's suggestion that Watari should be an old man purely because he felt that older characters were more fun to draw, but with all the quote, weird angles created by their wrinkles. Number 49. Obata was left to come up with the design of Nier and Mello, with all of the instruction from Oba being that they should both look quote, a little elish. Obata therefore struggled with the designs, since most of them looked too much like L. Number 50! Nier and Mello were originally conceived as twins, and even at one point they were L's sons, but the idea was dropped, probably because you absolutely cannot imagine L successfully flirting with a lady, much less raising children. Number 51, Nier's fondness for toys and stacking objects are a direct reflection of L's habit of stacking sugar cubes. Oba wanted childish elements to exist in both characters. Oba actually expected Nier's tower of matchsticks to be too difficult for Obata to draw, and was surprised when Obata pulled it off. Number 52. The end designs for Nier and Mello were actually switched. The design for Mello became the final design for Nier, and vice versa. Number 53. Nier's given name is Nate River, while Mello's is Mihail Kiel. Number 54. Opa feels he personally is a lot like Nier, since he rarely leaves his house. I mean, neither does L, but maybe Oba doesn't consume massive amounts of sugar. Number 55. Even though, SPOILERS, he's not the one to eventually oust Light, Opa says that L is the smartest character character in the series because, quote, the plot requires it. Number 56. Speaking of intellect, Oba said that Misa had to be spontaneous and not too bright, and that he determined her personality from the start. Number 57. Oba admits that Misa was created primarily so that Death Note wasn't one big sausage fest. Which are our words, not his. Number 58. Oba said that Misa's name was, quote, kinda random, but I think it was from Kuromisa, or Black Mass. It must have been based on something, end quote. How's that for conclusive answers? Number 59. Oba and Obata wanted Misa to have a gothic Lolita design to reflect the design of the Shinigami world. Although maybe the Lolita part is the more interesting, understated part of that description, given the role of her character. Number 60. Obata said his editor warned him that the scene with Misa in restraints was on morally thin ground for a children's magazine. A title was therefore placed over the drawing in chapter 33. Number 61. Misa was born on Christmas Day, 1984. And maybe your spoilers! Misa died on Valentine's Day 2011. Although her fate is only inference, Oba speculates that Misa, quote, committed suicide or something like that when she, also spoilers, learned of Light's death. Number 62. A character with Shinigami eyes can see the lifespan of a person by looking at them. The lifespan is represented as a number that needs to be converted into human time. Oba originally had a formula for converting the lifespan, but forgot it. Number 63. When a human makes a deal for Shinigami eyes, their eyesight becomes 3.6, also known as 2010. Oba considered this as, quote, very close to being a stupid rule. Number 64. Ren is Obata's favorite Shinigami because she is a 
good person, er, death deity. Either way, a moral compass is impressive in this series. Number 65. The design for Rem's head was inspired by the mythological Greek creature Medusa. Number 66. Originally, the Shinigami Gellis was portrayed as beautiful, but Obata decided to design him as a patchwork doll instead since he's such a pitiful character. Number 67. Obata based the doe's design on a bird, specifically a canary. Maybe a mummy canary? A 2007 survey done by the Ministry of Culture of Japan named Death Note the 10th greatest manga of all time. Number 69. Obata wishes he could have drawn Ibra to be more comedic. Obata believes that if he drew Ibra and Weddy to look a little more original, Oba would have given the characters a larger role. Number 70. The anime series was produced in Japan by Madhouse Studio, who is also responsible for Black Lagoon, Chai Sweet Home, and Death Parade. The anime aired in Japan on Nippon Television starting on October 3rd, 2006 and ran until June 26, 2007. Number 71, Tetsuro Araki, director of the anime, quote, literally begged to join the production team. Number 72, Araki has also directed several other notable anime, including High School of the Dead and Attack on Titan. Number 73, Tetsuro Araki admits that he felt an urge to support and cheer for Light, even though we learned earlier that he thinks Light would have killed him. Now that is devotion to your characters. Number 74, the series was licensed for legal downloading in North America through Viz's Direct to Drive, which can be seen as a precursor to simulcasting. This was the first time an anime was released in North America while it was still airing on Japanese television. Number 75, Death Note premiered on American television on Adult Swim and ran from October 20th, 2007 to July 4th, 2008. Number 76, the series has two opening themes, The World by Nightmare and What's Up People by Maximum the Hormone, the latter of which is totally insane and pretty darn great, mostly because of the screaming. Oh, the screaming. Number 77, on the other end, the series has three ending theme songs, Illumina by Nightmare, Zetsubo Billy by Maximum the Hormone, and Coda, Death Note by Yoshihisa Hirano, which was only used for the finale. Number 78, in episode 13, Misa is listening to the world by Nightmare. We also see that her cell phone ringer is the show's first ending, Illumina. We also learn that Matsuda has the same ringtone. Number 79, the score was composed by Yoshihisa Hirano, whose work also includes the 2011 Hunter x Hunter adaptation, and Hideki Taniyuchi, who also scored Kaji. Number 80! The chanting heard in the first episode is the Kyrie Eleison, which is part of Catholic Mass. The chant translates to, Lord, have mercy. The Lord will probably not have mercy. Number 81! The number of the abducted bus is 174. This is a reference to an incident in Brazil in 2000, where an armed man took over a bus and held it hostage, threatening to shoot all the passengers. Number 82. Seven voice actors in the English dub have also done voices on X-Men Evolution. Brad Swayle plays Light Yagami and Nightcrawler. Alessandro Giuliani plays Ellen Gambit. Kirby Morrow plays Mikami and Cyclops. Colleen Wheeler plays Rem and Mystique. Michael Adamswaith plays Ray Penbar and Colossus. Tabitha St. Germain plays Naomi Misora and Danielle Moonstar. And Sam Vincent plays the Doe and Forge. Oh god. Number 83, Ryuk's English voice actor is Brian Drummond. He also plays Vegeta, Yajiobe, and Baba in Dragon Ball Z. So it's his voice when you hear anything is over 9000! Drummond auditioned for the role only after seeing a picture of the character in the studio. Number 84, speaking of Dragon Ball Z, Light Yagami is played by Brad Swale, who is also known for voicing Gohan from Dragon Ball Z, as well as Rock in Black Lagoon, Moose in Ranma 1 Half, and Maxwell in Hamtaro. Oh, Hamtaro. Number 85, episodes 36 and 37 were the only ones of the series to be rated DVMA. Number 86, and major spoilers for this one, a character with a <laughs> Striking resemblance to Light Yagami appears in an episode of the anime Death Parade. One of the rules of the Death Note is that humans who use it can neither go to heaven nor hell. The setting of Death Parade is a sort of limbo in the afterlife. It's the closest we're gonna get to closure, folks. Number 87. Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror Volume 14 features a comic parody of Death Note where Bart finds the notebook. And naturally, Krusty plays Ryuk. 
Number 88, in February 2007, Konami released a game for the Nintendo DS called Death Note Kira Game. The player fills the shoes of either L or Light and has to figure out who the other character is. In July of the same year, a sequel game was released based on the second part of the manga. A third Death Note game was released in February 2008 that takes place before the Kira investigation. Do all of these sound awesome? Guess what, none of them were released in America. Number 89, there have been two Two live-action film adaptations, Death Note and Death Note The Last Name. In addition to a live-action spin-off film revolving around L called L Changed the World, and a live-action TV drama which began in 2015. Number 90! Shizuke Kaneko, director of the films, chose to have Ryuk rendered in computer graphics because he felt that using a human actor would be quote, too realistic, and might make the audience doubt that he's a death god. Kaneko told the graphics team to design Ryuk as if he were an actor inside a rubber suit. Number 91. When coming up with the film, Kaneko wanted to change how Light gains the Death Note in order to make the character more sympathetic in the beginning of the film. Number 92. Kenichi Matsuyama, who played L in the live action movies, said that he and Tatsuya Fujiwara, who played Light, would get so immersed in their roles that they would not speak to each other on set. Number 93. Warner Brothers owns the rights to make a Hollywood adaptation of Death Note. Nat Wolf, known for being part of Nickelodeon's The Naked Brothers Band, has been cast as Light Yagami. Do with that information what you will. Number 94. Shane Black, who directed Iron Man 3, was originally slated to be the director. And you can thank him because Warner Brothers wanted to change Light Yagami's background to make the story about revenge. But Black opposed it. But as of April 2015, Adam Wingard, who directed segments from VHS 1 and its sequel, is now directing Death Note. Hollywood politics seems miserable. Number 95. In 2015, a musical adaptation called Death Note the Musical ran in Japan and South Korea. The musical centers around the first half of the series. Number 96. In 2014, prior to the Japanese premiere, the Death Note musical was workshopped in New York City with an English-speaking cast, which means that you can listen to the English versions of a few songs, which we at Frederator cannot recommend doing highly enough because it's so horrifically awful, it is amazing. Take the duet between Light and L, for instance. Pure fool's gold. Number 97. Yet despite all this wild success, Death Note has not been without its fair share of controversy. The Albuquerque Public Schools District held a hearing in May 2010 to ban the Death Note manga from schools in the district. Luckily, the measure was unanimously defeated. Number 98. Other areas weren't so lucky. In 2007, Death Note was banned in Beijing, with officials scouring shops with the intent of confiscating any copies of the manga. Number 99. As of June 2009, the Chinese Ministry of Culture blacklisted the series, along with Attack on Titan and 36 others, from being distributed in the country at all. Number 100. Yet the anti-Death Note craze has some solid foundations. In 2007, there was a Belgian murder case dubbed the Manga Mord, or Manga Murder, by the Belgian media. Near the remains were notes of Sabotashi wa Kirides, which is Japanese for I am Kira. Four men were arrested in connection to this case in 2010. Number 101. In May 2008, one middle school student was expelled and three others suspended for having their own death note with 50 names in it. One of the names was then President George W. Bush. Number 102. In May 2010, another middle school student was suspended after his death note was found on a school bus. The kids list included the names of classmates and pop star Justin Bieber. Number 103. In September 2009, an eight-year-old Australian boy went a little more chillingly hardcore with his death note. In addition to names, the note included a battle plan detailing places inside his school where bombs could be placed. We remind you, this kid was eight. Number 104. In April 2008, two sixth grade boys from Alabama were arrested for having a death note containing the names of students and staff members. 
Number 105. After four volumes of the manga were found near the scene of the suicide of a teenage girl in Yekaterinburg, Russia, in February 2013, a local parents group wrote an open letter to President Vladimir Putin calling for a complete ban of all Death Note related media. Number 106. In response to all this controversy surrounding the series, Shizuka Kaneko, the director of the first live action Death Note film, said, If preventing them from seeing this movie is going to make kids better, then why not prevent them from watching all all bad news. Which, while Death Note is definitely not the kind of series a parent would necessarily encourage their kid to watch, is a valid point. And number 107! After Death Note, Oba and Obata reunited to work on the series Bakuman, which ran from August 2008 till April 2012, and then again in 2015 on the series Platinum End. Thanks for watching 107 Facts You Should Know About Death Note. Which fact is your favorite? Did we miss anything? Leave us a comment below, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to Cartoon Hangover so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Remember, Frederator loves you. Hello there, Frederator. I'm a huge fan of your channel and your show, but I'm wondering if you'll do some of the older stuff from the 80s stuff the older generation grew up with. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Bye-bye.